I had to the path of my own experience. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience presented by DraftKings. Week two, rankings, debate. You want it by position, you hit the time codes and look at the position. You want a rankings list? You want to hear me yammer on with Jake Seeley? It's easy stuff. The links to the list are down in the description, as is the week one DraftKings Listeners League. It's already 30% full. If you want a spot, go reserve it right now. Best tournament on DraftKings. There's no rake. It's $15 to play. Three max entry and a very even payout structure. So highly recommend that you go get into that. That right now, smash a like to the episode. Sub to Mayo Media Network, Mr. Seeley. Did people come at you in week? I, I suppose you you remember <laughs> the people that come at you for the bad calls, but it felt like yes. you had a really good week last week. I, I had a really good week. It just started off as bad as it could possibly start off for Cam Akers. It's like it could not have gone more wrong, honestly. But yes, a lot coming after me for Cam Akers. I joked around with it, played around, but then had some serious talk about Cam Akers as well. But after that. It was great. Ton of Saquon Barkley celebrations going on. A lot of other stuff getting right, including like a nice Robbie Anderson call and all that type of stuff. But oh, it's what we do every single year, Pat. We get a hell of a lot more right than we do wrong. That's why we do what we do. But at the same time, as you said, we remember the bat. It's because not only that people come for us, I, I don't know about you, but I always tell people I legitimately don't want to be wrong, not because I'm always right, because I don't want people to lose their games. I don't want to steer them wrong. Yeah, I mean, you probably take it, uh, you, you take it harder than me. I mean, that's why you're the most <laughs> accurate ranker going, and I'm not. Second. That's why you're on the show second. to tell me what's wrong with my rankings. So we're going to get into those in a second. The rankings I want to talk about initially are going to be the waiver wire rankings for the week. I did the waiver wire show on Monday morning. At the time, I thought I knew the news. Apparently, it was reported incorrectly. So as an addendum to that, I want to talk about the waiver wire right now. And you can find the, uh, the hot link to the updated rankings. Those are all on DKNation.com. They're also down in the description right now as a hot link, the article that you're seeing on the screen at the moment. I put Jeff Wilson back at number one. Initially, I had Jalen Warren at number one because it looked like Najee was going to be out two to three weeks and that Mitchell might miss a week. Not the case. Mitchell's going to be out six to eight weeks, and Najee Harris is probably going to play this week. I got him in the rankings. So now the top <laughs> four are going to be Wilson, Burkhead, Jamal Williams, and Jalen Warren. When we talk about things that we got wrong in week one, me specifically, after the Cam Akers thing, I was like, there's no possible way you could play James Robinson. That would be <laughs> ludicrous. But now all of a sudden, he's like, like you, like you had mentioned, like if James Robinson's available in your league, he would be the one to go get, wouldn't he? He would be. Uh, Jeff Wilson, a very close second. And if you're shooting for top 15, I guess you could argue Jeff Wilson in case he locks down that role and doesn't seed any work to anybody else. Uh, maybe only in the passing game a little bit, as in Elijah Mitchell last year when he was getting 20, 27, 21 carries and stuff like that. James Robinson's still going to split. And the interesting thing was, is yes, James Robinson had more than ETN did in the first half, but the snaps and usage were actually more to ETN. I think it was like 25 to 12 or 13 in the first half for ETN snaps. And then it reversed in the second half, part of it also because of the ETN fumble. I don't think this is a long term of it's going to be one way or the other. I think this is Doug Peterson. It's going to be 50 50 all season. But what you just said was interesting. It was like, no way I want James Robinson. No way I want Sterling Shepard. And then both of them come out and are like, Achilles? Yeah, who needs those? It's kind of insane to think about. Just like, yeah, Achilles. Yeah, And no one ever comes back from an Achilles injury is fine. The guy that I want to come back from the Achilles injury, who we had already seen, be like, oh, he must be fine <laughs> now. Sucks. And then the other two guys are, I mean, they weren't awesome by any stretch of the imagination, but very useful. For they you were in for fantasy purposes. The weird thing about the Robinson ETN thing is that like ETN dropped two touchdowns. Like if he catches those, James Robinson actually does nothing in that game. And that's very true. The other interesting thing here is I know you said that the one guy sucks, but there seems to be more going on with Cam Akers. And then I will say two more. Deonta Foreman took two years to get back, but he looked good last year. The other one is everybody forgets Demarius Thomas. Demarius Thomas had one of the best seasons of his career, granted with Peyton Manning. No, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, but he came back he, now his second Achilles, his second killed his career, but the first he came back from, and was it 12, what was it? 12 or 1300 yards and like 15 touchdowns that year or something ridiculous. He was a top five wide receiver that year. Well, I mean, that's pretty good. That's what I would want. I don't think this Sterling is... Shepard's ever going to reach those heights. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't even think Cam Akers is going to get that rushing. <laughs> yeah. That, that, I mean, that would be, in a, he would be like a top five running back if he got there. 
Yes, which I was kind of hoping for. <laughs> well, I mean, he's he's quite behind the eight ball after a big zero in week one for him. Let's go to the running back rankings for week two. Not much has changed at the very top. And, you know, I'm going to roll with the guys that I like. So take a look at them right now. You got Jonathan Taylor coming in at number one. Christian McCaffrey at number two. Joe Mixon, your guy. Saquon man. Barkley, number four, Derrick Henry, Antonio Gibson, Leonard Fournette, Austin Eckler, DeAndre Swift, and Elvin Kamara. You see eight, nine, and ten on this list. Eckler did not play the amount of snaps that maybe that we thought he was going to play. We saw some Josh Kelly get involved. Sony Michelle was there. It was like, okay, this is kind of strange. DeAndre Swift got usurped at the goal line like we thought that he may by Jamal Williams. I mean, you get those two to Swift on top of his other one. He breaks the fantasy slate, but Jamal Williams was the goal line back for Detroit. Swift was able to get into the end zone. That's great. But in these games where he doesn't put up 154 yards rushing and it's like 60 yards rushing, it might be a bit trickier. This seems to be a good matchup against Washington, though. And then Alvin Kamara has a rib injury. No one mentions anything about we're just so focused on Michael Thomas. That's where all the reporting is for the week that, you know, this just kind of slides by. No one mentions it. And all of a sudden, Mark Ingram's on the field a ton. That's <laughs> not great. So when we take a look at the snap shares and you can find this all in the Sunday night newsletter that I have coming out uh, every single week. So, you know, you can just click on the snaps. You can kind of fool around with it and check out where everyone is at. You can see Saquon, Daryl Henderson, Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Jonathan Taylor, the guys that are at the very top of the rankings generally are the ones who play the most. Uh, you can sub free to the newsletter down in the description. Uh, if you like, uh, I recommend that you do that. There's three a week that come out to keep you on top of all the injury news, all the hot links everything like that so uh mayo media help us out here by subbing down in the description and of the podcast and video to the mayo media newsletter the one i want to talk to you about just very briefly before we talk about the top 10 you'll see rex burkhead 72 percent of the snaps damian pierce 28 percent of the snaps now when we started thinking about this a little bit earlier in the season, it was just like, oh, in like game neutral situations, this is great for Damian Pierce. Rex Burkhead's right. going to be the catch up guy. That's why I didn't love Pierce in week one. Turns out in game neutral situations, it's all Rex Burkhead too. That's not great. <laughs> that is not great. Uh, really what it comes down to is, yeah, probably th for every report, for everything we saw from Pierce in the preseason, nobody was saying Burkhead, Burkhead was going to. You were on the team of like saying, hey, Burkhead split. And if the passing game is going that way, it's going to be Burkhead. You said that all along. But nobody was saying that Burkhead will be the guy no matter what. And he was in week one, no matter what. I don't think that holds. I think Pierce works his way into more. Maybe this is, I don't think necessarily to talk about Cam Akers again, but go back to his rookie season where we don't see him really take over until week 13 or 14 or whatever it was. But I think it could be working his way to a 50-50 split. Maybe he gets to 60-40 because, again, Rex Burkhead is Rex Burkhead, and I don't think he'll go away in the passing game. But what we expected, or what seemed to be the prevailing thought, was like 70-30 run game Pierce, 70-30 passing game Burkhead for what you just said. So this is concerning for now. You can't start Pierce. There is no way in hell I'm selling low or dropping him. Just be patient. And if you drafted late August, unfortunately, you probably spent like a fourth or fifth round pick on Pierce. But just hold the course. And if Burkhead's out there and you're shallow at running back, go grab. We, we know the shoe's going to drop at some point, Pat. But you at least ride it until it falls off. Yeah, and I do think in catch-up situations for the Texans that Burkhead's going to be the guy on the field. Right. That's not going to change. So, like, where we could say a 50-50 split is that it still ends up being what we thought was going to happen. But at least for now, it's not. It's just 70-30 Burkhead, period. So let me run some of these snap shares by you at running back and see if any of them concern you whatsoever. Let's see here. I guess Najee Harris got hurt. Austin Eckler, 51% of the snaps. That is mm -hmm. worrisome to me. Uh, it's so it's worrisome, but also I kind of alluded to worrying that this was going to happen when people are like, why don't you have Austin Eckler number two? But I still, I thought the efficiency would help him still be a top six, seven running back. Like I wasn't taking him out of the first round. I wasn't taking him out of the discussion. I still had him in front of Saquon Barkley because like, you know what? Let's keep Austin Eckler fresher. Let's the, the chargers had playoff aspirations, obviously, and they have Super Bowl aspirations, obviously. And Austin Eckler has an injury history, obviously. And what I was sitting here saying is like, why run him into the ground if you can use other options because of what happens to him? I didn't think it would be this big of a split. And that's coming from somebody that's so where you have Eckler at eight, I think that's a fair spot. And I could see weeks where he gets back to 70%, but I could see other weeks of repeating what we just saw. 
Kareem Hunt, 57%. Nick Chubb, 51%. Is that game flow, or is this just something that we should expect with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback? Mm, I think a little bit of a mix of both. Uh, so, it, I mean, I guess it has to be one or the other. But no, no, I think it's like a little bit of the game flow. I think if the Browns were nursing a lead every single week, it wouldn't be quite the Nick Chubb volume that we expect. Like maybe it's more of – 65 35 than being the 75 25 like it might have been in the past so i think it's a mix of both uh, but uh, i think it's at least concerning enough to what you keep saying about nick chubb and why we sat here and had our ranks of him as just outside of rb1 territory before the season started is because he just doesn't get used in the passing game and if you're going to tick off a little bit from his rushing side i mean he's essentially an rb2 uh damian harris how about this one 39 percent mm. of the snaps ramondre stevenson 26 percent of the snaps <laughs> What is going on in New England? What happens all the time? This is why I only wanted Damian Harris. And not that I think that that's not concerning, but this is what you, we had this conversation. I didn't want Stevenson. I wasn't on the Steven season and he was going in front of Damian Harris and all the Ty Montgomery got the passing game work so much so that Stevenson was third overall. Like it was Harris Montgomery Stevenson. Now, do I expect better for Stevenson some weeks? And do I expect better potentially overall? Sure. But why is everybody surprised that the Patriots are doing Patriots things in the backfield? Because this one actually makes no sense to me. Like, at least before there was like... <laughs> What's the wrong defined... with Ty Montgomery? I mean... He's James do have, White. Do we have to pick up Ty Montgomery and play him in PPR leagues? Because I don't want to... No, be, I don't no, want to no. The answer world. is stay away from this backfield. They just use Damian Harris and half in non-PPR. All right. Well, some of the ones that were very encouraging, like, I mean, I rode was riding A.J. Dillon all year long, and it was great to see yes, him were. as the primary goal line back for Green Bay. Not that you know, he mm -hmm. was any great shakes, but he ended up getting him. But both these guys are playing enough that Jones probably isn't a like mid-tier running back one. He's probably a high-end two, but like Dillon might be mm -hmm. a low-end two, and they might just switch spots every single week. Yeah, I think they could be very close to each other. And uh, what is the? I think I made the comparison to you, and I said the Broncos this year where they both finish in the teens. And like back to back almost. So I, I love to see that use from AJ Dillon because of what you, your argument at the time wasn't even just AJ Dillon. Your argument was like, hey, if AJ Aaron Jones gets hurt, now I have a top five running back on my hands. Well, the best part about that argument was that even if it never happens, you still have an RB2 on your hands. The last one that I want to talk about is is Michael Carter the guy that we should be playing in the Jets' backfield, not Brees Hall? Well, we sat there at the end of the preseason and said this is going to be a 50-50 split. The Jets keep saying it's going to be a 50-50 split and that we can sit here and say Brees Hall is the better all-around talent on paper and that evaluations have him better all around. But those same evaluations, if true, I said these words to you, Pat, even if true, this is coming from somebody that likes both players, let's not forget Carter's talent. Let's not forget that before the NFL draft in fantasy circles, including myself, we're putting Michael Carter as a fringe RB1 because the backfield was going to be his and what we saw from him last year on his touch basis and that he could be Austin Eckler-like. So if he's going to dominate the pass-catching opportunities right now, not that Hall can't work his way in, but yes, he's the one you want right now because I think the assumption, as we at least say so far, is that just defense is not going to basically shut any down, shut any team down. Uh, it was super encouraging to see Chase Edmonds on the field more than Raheem Mostart in a very mm -hmm. run-happy script based on them leading the entire game. He played 64% of the snap, so when we get to the lower part of the rankings, you're going to see Chase Edmonds pop into that spot. David Montgomery, 66-29 to 29 over Herbert. Herbert obviously ended up with the touchdowns, but they stuck to a script, Jake. It was two mm -hmm. drives for Montgomery, one drive for Herbert, rinse and repeat the entire game. Yeah. And which is like, what they do the math 66 33 split. So, you know, that's 65 35. Kind of think what we expected in general, but that puts Montgomery outside of RB2 conversation, given this offense, given what Fields might run with himself, and then puts Herbert into mm, dicey flex usage. But if anything were to happen to David Montgomery, you know, now you're talking about a top 15 running back. So, top 20 worst. But yeah, I think that this is very, very clear what the Bears plan on doing, which is also not passing. Like, field or not, field or not, nobody on that team had more than three targets. No, so yeah, you could probably drop Cole Komet. We'll get to him in a second. So the entire running back rankings, once again, you can find these up on DKNation.com. Hot links down in the description. Oh, 
oh, as well, this is the final day to get into the PME audio podcast review. You can find those links down there, Apple and Spotify. Leave a five-star review, actually sub to the podcast, Pat Mayo Experience, set on auto downloads, and then leave a five-star review, something you enjoy about the show, Twitter handle or email, so I can contact you if you're a winner, if you're listening on Spotify. You can do this on both to get two entries, by the way. Leah, just click the five-star button, screenshot it to me on Twitter, uh, at the PME, and then boom, you're in the draw. I'm announcing the winners on Wednesday's Pat Mayo Experience, so you might want to get in and go do that right now. There's $1,000 up for grabs, 500 straight cash to the winner. You might want to do that, okay? So I had Kamara at 10. I go Dalvin Cook, James Conner, Javante Williams, Aaron Jones, Nick Chubb, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Josh Jacobs, who looked better than I would have thought. Brandon Bolden looks like he's hurt now. Maybe it's better for Amir Abdullah. We can talk about that in a second, but Jacobs, five targets, four catches. That's what I'm looking for along with the work on the ground. Cordero Patterson, Daryl Henderson, Najee Harris, Devin Singletary, A.J. Dillon, Jeff Wilson, Kareem Hunt, Michael Carter, Chase Edmonds, Rashad Penny. That's assuming that Kenneth Walker is still going to be out in week two. We'll talk about that in a minute. And these rankings always update, by the way. And you can just go check back every day and you'll you'll find the updates when injuries are revealed. Zeke, David Montgomery, Rex Burkhead, James Robinson, Travis Etienne, Kenyon Drake, Melvin Gordon, Zach Moss, Tony Pollard, Damian Pierce, Damian Harris, mm-hmm. and Jamal Williams, Jake. Those are the top 40 this week of the running back rankings uh, with the Cordero Patterson stuff. I thought it was kind of interesting mainly because Damian Williams got hurt in that game. And Damian Williams was the one who was on the field more often than not. Then all of a sudden it's all Patterson all the time. And he looks amazing. So until Damian Williams comes back from this injury, I think it's full go on Cordero Patterson again. Yeah, I don't know how much they'll sprinkle in Algier because Algier was inactive. So he, they, they we don't actually, even know if he's going to be active again this week. Well, they have to have somebody if it's no Damian Williams because that's what they went with last week. It was just the two of them in the role. That, and that's why Cordero Patterson turned into Bell Cal City when Williams went out and didn't come back because there was nobody else to give the ball to in the backfield. So I think Patterson's fair in this conversation. Uh, and that's I'm not saying that to downgrade Patterson. I'm not saying that to start or go crazy for Algier. I think my point being is it's going to be interesting to see if they get some evaluation over Algier, who I think could be their new Tevin Coleman, but like the good Tevin Coleman from back in the day, where just one cut between the tackles and a nice complimentary piece to Patterson. So yeah, where Patterson you have, but until that happens, I like, I, I don't know that even if active that Algier is going to cut much into Patterson for the fact that he was inactive in week one. So yeah, all that being said, I think that's a fair spot. So yeah, number I actually would start him over Jacobs. You what's that? I would start him over Jacobs. Jacobs, I, zero I, passing game work, zero. He wasn't even out there on third downs at all. Oh, Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Didn't he end up with four catches? Am I missed? No, I thought it. I thought no, yeah, I'm almost. Maybe, maybe I I have this wrong. Maybe I looked at maybe maybe wrong. it was third and long. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Oh, maybe so. I, now now I a, need to there go was look a this definite up. zero. <laughs> I know. All right. Well, anyway, well, I'll, I'll, more on that. I'll, in a second. I'll look. <laughs> yeah, you you go look that up. Uh, I have Daryl Henderson and Najee Harris at 19 and 20. Obviously, Harris probably isn't going to play. Had the second most second highest snap share of any running back in the league this week, but I would. Wait, like if you had to start one of the two of them, it's obviously Daryl Henderson at this point over Cam Akers, right? Mm, yeah, until we see. Get, so to go back to the Akers situation was that he was the reports. He was in the doghouse before that game. So soft tissue injury potentially on top of this, but he was already not seeing snaps. He was already in the doghouse from the comments of McVeigh after the game. The reporters are now coming out and saying like, like, again, more of this like, hey, it would be nice to have this information before week one rolls around. But Cam Akers, something, whether in practice, something, whether in the preseason, whatever it is, there's a message being sent by McVeigh. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's the Achilles, especially if we're going to go off James Robinson or Sterling Shepard, but maybe he's the bad case. Maybe now we go two and three, two good cases, one bad case, but whatever it might be, still holding out hope, but holding out hope in the fact of you can't start him. You have to roll out Daryl Henderson. But I do will say this, Pat, I have concern for both of how awful that offensive line looked. That offensive line was already getting destroyed, and granted, it's the Bills, but they lost their center, and now Note Boom, who's not even that good, potentially out with his sprained MCL. So that offensive line has concerns for me for Matthew Stafford, Akers, Henderson, and pretty much everybody not named Cooper Cup. Yeah, I just went back and looked at it. Jacobs only had one catch for 16 yards. I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. I yeah. when I when I copied his name into my spreadsheet to go look at it so I could just really wrangle down on routes run. Uh didn't copy him in the right way. That's never a good look, is it, Jake? Yeah, no, but see, that's why we have the show to rectify it. So fix fix all that. 
Yeah, so let's go to those rankings right now, take a look at them, and see where we want to drop them down to. So Josh Jacobs, not listen, I mean, it's three catches that I was off by, but would you play him over not like a banged-up Najee Harris? Mm, I would play Najee Harris if he's ready to roll. Well, I mean, do we know if he's going to be ready to roll or not? I mean, he's, if he's going to be active, do we assume that means he's fine, or is he going to be, like, limited? I do. I assume that means he's going to be active. So, yeah. Okay. By the way, yeah, for the, the official from True Media stats, the official 0% third downs for Josh Jacobs. Well, that's not great, but Bolden's hurt. Yeah, Zamir White and Abdul, though. Yeah, I mean, are they using Zamir White as a pass catching back? No, it's just he's going to be on, on the field. And it's still Abdul to go back to the Abdul thing. I just, <laughs> it's Josh McDaniels. He's rinse and repeating from what he was doing with the Patriots. He's just going to piss us off. All right, Jacobs or Devin Singletary? <sighs> Jacobs. Okay, so that's so number 21 is a better spot for Jacobs. Yeah, not he's not too far down. He's still it, like he's essentially Damian Harris. Josh McDaniels has Damian Harris, and now he has Damian Harris, who's Josh Jacobs, who we've already known. And well, it's a, nice and a better spot. offense. It's a nice, it's a nice <laughs> spot against Arizona this week at home, too. Yeah, and a much better offense. All right, so I guess the question that everyone wants to know if they watched us be like, hey, draft Cam Akers. Well, it's week one, he's absolutely terrible. What do you do with Cam Akers? Yeah. You bench him until you see more. You, there's no way on earth you can drop him. Do not drop him. Please don't drop him. It's not like Daryl Henderson was setting the world on fire. He looked okay in spots, but and some of it could have been the offensive line. But I would go and try and trade low for him because there are people who already want to drop him and say they're he's dead. He's done. It's Daryl Henderson's backfield for the long haul. Daryl Henderson is a good running back. He's not as good as Cam Akers. If and I'm not saying Cam Akers is 100% fine, but if Cam Akers is Cam Akers, he's better, and he's better for this team. The question is, we don't know, because we don't know how much of this factor is the soft tissue. There's three things at play, and we don't know. We don't know how much the soft tissue injury is bothering him. We don't know how much he's in the doghouse for whatever reasons that McVay is alluding to. And then because of those two things, we don't know if the Achilles is still bothering him because we can't use last year's playoff and Super Bowl to evaluate any more than the fact that they wanted to use him like a bell cow in that situation, even though he wasn't a hundred percent. So it's unfortunately a wait and see approach, but please do not drop him. Then go. If somebody wants to hell there are names out, you could probably trade Dontrell Hilliard for cam Akers in some leagues right now. And you should oh. immediately do that. Yes. Yes. Most definitely do that. I have Jeff Wilson at number 23, uh, assuming he's the starter, everything. I mean, he looks locked in at least for week two against Seattle. Uh, the running backs did some damage against Seattle on Monday evening. Now, they were like the focal point of the passing game for some reason, which I did not expect. <laughs> I don't think anyone expected that one, but here we are. They were still able to gash them on the ground a bit. I think 23 is the right spot. I was about to say, I feel better about Jeff Wilson than I do at Josh Jacobs. Really? So you would go, so it's single, so you have problems with Jacobs and Singletary at 17 and 21. You would put A.J. Dillon, Jeff Wilson above both those guys? So I would go Jeff Wilson, then A.J. Dillon, then uh, Jacobs, then Singletary. So I'm only moving Wilson up one spot. Again, he was the guy. Mason was out there. The reports are Mason was active over Davis Price because he can play special teams and they don't trust Davis Price on special teams. Uh, from Matt Barrows, the owner at the Athletics, said Davis Price is their long-term plan because his build and style fits what they want. It's actually Elijah Mitchell, but with the body who can withstand what they want. But at least into through the preseason, he wasn't ready. So with Davis Price being inactive, again, I know it's partly because of special teams, but Davis Price might not be the guy for a few weeks, even if Wilson isn't looking great. At least we know in week two, Wilson should be the guy. Like Mason's probably not going to take much away from him. Davis Price is probably not going to take much away from him. If anything, even while Mitchell was out there, who looked good, unfortunately, right before he got hurt, they still had Juszczyk out there doing the passing stuff work before Mason was even involved. So that's why I feel like, like Wilson is the guy. Back to the waiver wire for a second. I have Tyrion David Pry Davis Price at number seven. That's behind Khalil Herbert and Zach Moss. Would you bump mm -hmm. him up in your own priority, depending on what you want right now? Like, are you taking a long term speculation on Davis mm -hmm. Price, or would you rather have Herbert or Moss? Because Moss, yeah, I mean, yes, James Cook fumbled the first time he ever touched the ball. However, it does seem like Moss did have a role going into that game, and it was a lot bigger than any of us anticipated. Yeah, so for me, uh, so my waiver column, so I have Jalen Warren up with Khalil Herbert in the fact of like we know what's going to happen if either of those guys got hurt in front of them. Uh, they're up there with like 
Jamal Williams and Burkhead and Gainwell kind of like in that territory. And it depends on what you need. Do you need a starter now? Or are you, you know, looking for pure upside? And I try to think more of pure upside, kind of like how you draft is, you know, I, do I really want Mark Ingram? Because even if Cal Kamara gets hurt, he's probably going to split with somebody else because we've seen him at this point averaging like 2.7 yards per carry. Like, eh, you know, I could find another Mark Ingram out there because even best case scenario is still like a fringe RB2-3. So I have... Rashad White, Jordan Mason, Davis Price with like McKinnon and McKissick for various reasons. Of course, McKinnon and McKissick are if you need help in PPR. These are your long-term upside stash plays where I don't even get to a Zach Moss until I'm talking about a Raheem Moster or a Brandon Bolden or a Samaj P. Ryan type of guys. Okay, so last guy I wanted to talk about. We'll go back over to the ranks for a second. I have Ezekiel Elliott at number 29, Tony Pollard at number 37. What the hell do you do with these guys? <laughs> you roll out Zeke, you, you roll him out, but uh, this is you know, at least a hopeful situation that the Bengals will see some opportunities for him, but the Cooper Rush situation is worrisome. Not that he's awful. He's no Nathan Peterman, but it's definitely a downgrade from Dak Prescott, although Dak Prescott didn't even look that great before he left the game, which is concerning as a whole. That offensive line looked, that offensive line looked worse than the Seattle offensive line so far, at least through one game. So I'm not saying, you know, bench Zeke, but where you have them, I don't know that you can really argue because the share, the snap share was even worse than it used to be, despite that the touch share wasn't too bad. The snap share was worse. What do you think this does to Pollard? I don't see how you even use Tony Pollard. He's the best running back of all time, though. We know that. So he would have scored 17 times if he given him all the opportunities. He should. He, he should. He should be scoring that much. That's exactly what we should be doing here. I, I think he up. could actually do more damage in the passing game if they gave him the opportunity, but I don't know that. I just don't know that. Like, <laughs> CeeDee Lamb is now in the Amari Cooper conversation. Oh, my like, God. It, don't get me started on what is going on with CeeDee Lamb. It's it's not great news. I, Cam Akers, CeeDee Lamb, big on both of them. Like, this one's not really CeeDee's fault, but, like, he didn't look great anyway. And now this no. is just wor- This is, like, worst-case scenario for him. No, we are not even talking to Mario Cooper. That was the, one of the, my worst case scenarios, too. It's like, ah, oh, he's just going to get peppered a ton because Brissett can't throw it downfield. And it's like, oh, Donovan Peoples Jones is only going to mm-hmm. run 10 yards downfield? What the hell? <laughs> uh, the one thing I wanted to look at before we jump over to wide receivers are the running back projections for the week. I already got them done, Jake, with my customizations. Uh, I have Leonard Fournette as, by the projections, as the highest scoring running back of the week. So it would be Fournette, Taylor, McCaffrey, Mixon, jo- Aaron Jones. Cordero Patterson, DeAndre Swift, Austin Eckler, Javante Williams, Delvin Cook, Saquon Barkley. Now that range goes from the high end of 26 points in PPR to of Leonard Fournette all the way down to Saquon Barkley at 18 points. So that's what the Run the Sims projections. You can go customize these any way you want as well. Uh, if you just want to go to runthesims.com slash may, you can get the weekly and just you know, start punching everything in, no matter how you like to do it. Uh, I would highly recommend that you go test that out and get the discount code in order to do it because you can manufacture your own projections and rankings any way that you like and it's based on 10,000 simulations which I hear is pretty good so we'll go check that out (laughs) wide receiver rankings I was going to say 10,000 is definitely helpful it's a lot better than like 10 Yo, it is. I mean, it generates 10,000 simulations in like less than 10 seconds. So you can kind of adjust. Yeah, you don't like what you see. Go readjust it and just boom. You're not sitting there for like two hours trying to run 10,000 simulations of a slate. So it works out pretty well in that regard. Wide receiver rankings for week two. Cooper Cup, still number one. Justin Jefferson, number two. Devontae Adams, number three. Jamar Chase, number four feel like those four have now kind of separated themselves as the four right now after one. I mean, they were what the top four that we had coming into the season. They've really separated <laughs> themselves as the top four. Tyree Hill, <laughs> his, his usage, uh, he's back up to number five. Steph Diggs, Michael Pittman, A.J. Brown, Deontay Johnson, and Mike Evans. If we want to go further down the list at wide receiver. Once again, these are all up on DKNation.com. Quick links in the description. Uh, I have Brennan Cooks at number 11. Loved what I saw from Cooks coming into the week. Liked what I saw in week one. Terry McLaurin, Jalen Waddle, Debo Samuel, Amon Ra St. Brown. I have C.D. Lamb at number 16. We'll talk about him in a second. T. Higgins, assuming he returns from his concussion. Gabe Davis, Mike Williams, Christian Kirk, D.J. Moore, Michael Thomas, Cortland Sutton, Rashad Bateman, Hollywood Brown at number 25. Those are my top 25 half point PPR rankings mm-hmm. for week two. 
Jake, uh, where you got some problems? I got some problems with one of my favorite players for the past multiple seasons, and you know how much I love Brandon Cooks. Patrick Sertain, it's done for. He's he's now in that conversation of steer clear. Uh, I am still starting Brandon Cooks, but DK Metcalf, what was it, seven catches for 10 yards? I know it wasn't that bad, but he, he barely got anything in that game, and he caught quite a few balls. So I do not hate Brandon Cooks. Anybody who knows me knows how much I love Brandon Cooks. But this is now, when you face the Broncos and Sertain, this is now in the conversation of Jalen Ramsey, who actually got torched in week one by Stefan Diggs and everybody else. Uh, but he is in the conversation of steer clear, if possible. But if possible, Brandon Cook's volume is still going to – like I think his floor is what DK Metcalf just did. What was it? What was the exact line? Seven for 30-something? Yeah, I think it was seven for 40, I think is what it ended up being. Okay. So that's his floor, which would still keep him inside the top 25 for me. But – yeah, I, there's no way I would put him inside the top. I, I wouldn't have him as a wide receiver one. Okay, so let's jump back over, take a look. Brendan Cooks, number 11. Where would you move him down to? I'm, I'm on Ryan St. Brown, still getting the volume until James and Williams. I would, actually, that's where I put him. I put him 15 because I would still play him in front of C.D. Lamb. <laughs> All right, so we'll move Cooks to number 15 in the updated rankings. What do we do with C.D. Lamb? Because this is a real problem. Because you can play this one of two ways. You can play it as, well... His role hasn't changed. He's still, he and Dalton Schultz are the only two guys on the team, theoretically, garnering a monster target share. Cooper Rush, who knows? Maybe he'll just be bad and chuck it up, which is good for C.D. Lamb. Just chuck it up down the field. Maybe he can make a play or two, and boom, you're good to go. Or is it just like, this is now a black hole. This is not good. I think the worst case scenario is what just happened to Amari Cooper in week one. That's the worst case scenario, which is also what happened to CeeDee Lamb in the first week. I mean, honestly, let's be realistic. Uh, the upside is that the volume offsets it. And that was my argument for Amari Cooper. Uh, so I think the upside is that CD Lamb still sees seven, eight targets because there's nobody else to throw to. Even if Michael Gallup comes back, he's probably not going to be 100 percent in week one. Uh, week one of his season. So I think that that's the potential to look for. 16 maybe a little bit high. If T. Higgins is off of concussion, then I feel okay with him. Gabriel Davis, I would feel okay with. Mike Williams. Like, for everybody out there on Mike Williams, and you know this, Pat, why are we forgetting that this is just Mike Williams? Like, like last year he had six games of single, like low single digits. And I think, uh, who was it that somebody tweeted? I think it was Matt Harmon that actually tweeted out. Like, three of those were like two catches. I think maybe it was in four of them, was two or fewer. Mike Williams is going to be okay. Christian Kirk is who I would put him behind because Christian Kirk is the volume play in the same conversation, but at least Trevor Lawrence is playing well, and at least Christian Kirk is playing well. So I know it sounds maybe sacrilegious to say C.D. Lamb deserves to be behind Christian Kirk, but that's where he would be for me. Okay, so I'll move Kirk to 19, and I'll drop put in my own sound effects for this. C.D. Lamb down to number 20. <laughs> Give it a week, see how it goes on this front. Were you surprised by how good Jarvis Landry was? Because I have him... And see, it's still difficult for me to kind of parse out here. So after Hollywood Brown at number 25, Amari Cooper, Jarvis Landry, Adam Thielen, DK Metcalf, Jerry Judy, Brandon Ayuk. I have Allen Robinson at number 22. Is that like 30 spots too high? <laughs> I don't think like I'd say, OK, on Allen Robinson, because here's the, to go back to that game. The Cam Akers is it was oh, Cam Akers was overshadowing for most people. There was plenty that were paying attention because all they had was Allen Robinson. But there was overshadowing how bad Allen Robinson was for fantasy purposes. But if you watch the Bills game, here's the concern of Allen Robinson going forward without Van Jefferson, without a third threat. Al Robertson could be in trouble because I'm going to compare it to what I talked to you. I'm a Robert Woods fan, but what happened in week one for Robert Woods is why I had him in the forties or around 40 is that if Robert Woods is treated like the number one and gets the Odori Jackson treatment with the giants, which is what happened. He gets eliminated from the equation. What the bills did is they bracketed the living hell out of Allen Robinson. Jackson and Hyde were all over him the entire game. Like Jackson was taking the underneath Hyde was taking over top. And there was nowhere for Allen Robinson to separate whether or not he's not 100% of the speed he used to be. He just, he was getting bracketed the entire time. They said, we'll let Coop, Cup, Cooper Cup do his thing, and one person isn't going to beat us, and the Bills succeeded. So if you have a copy and paste, and future teams are doing this, and on top of it, Matthew Stafford's not getting time, that's my concern for Allen Robinson. So, so in the 30s, where he's with Lockett and Renfro and stuff like that, that's where he deserves to be, because he could still finish top 15 or he could repeat week one. So I think where you have him is a fair spot. 
Yeah, I, even I was down on that a little bit. Just I, I just found this entire range very confusing because you have a bunch of guys like Ayuk was out there a ton in every two wide receiver set he played. Debo wasn't even out there as much as Ayuk. But like, is Trey Lance bad? Was it weather related? I don't know what the hell was going on. So I'm still playing him. You can't is just Kittle start back. Bench. What's that? Is Kittle back? I mean, that's going to be a factor on top of it. Yeah, I, I have Kittle ranked this week, but I, I assume that he's going to be back. But he might not be. You're right. No, so like I would say you could potentially move Ayuk up because now with Jeff Wilson and everything like this, you could just see shifting of, I mean, honestly, Debo's value last week was only because he was running the ball. I mean, in the passing game, he was almost a non-factor. So, well, this is, I mean, this is what the case against Debo that you and I were talking about all preseason. Like, what if he just runs the ball seven times a game and gets two catches? If he doesn't score a touchdown, he is useless. Uh, Honestly? He's slightly better version of Taysom Hill in this range. <laughs> that's that's a pretty apt comparison. I, like, I, God, that was annoying as hell. But maybe it was the back issue. But I, I saw some people are like, why aren't you more upside or uh, excited about Taysom Hill at tight end? I was like, it was four carries. Like, are we really getting that excited for him at tight end? Well, it actually works out like in terms of waiver wire purposes, because Juwan Johnson was actually quite involved in the Saints offense as the pass catching tight end that Taysom Hill overshadowed everything that he was doing that everyone just is going to forget about him on the waiver wire. They'll be like, oh, I need Gerald Everett because Keenan Allen is out. It's like, nah, maybe you need Juwan Johnson instead. Like he could be a real guy on your fantasy team. He was doing more than Cole Komet and a couple other dudes, that's for sure. Big Irv. So I, I'm a little patient on Irv Smith. There was reports that he wasn't. Well, so this is this is good and bad. There was reports that it was still the thumb. He wasn't work, you know, splitting to work his way back. But then we got the conversation this morning from Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings that like, oh, we have plans for him when the situation depends on it. And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Now. So the rest of these 30s, like I liked what I saw from Drake London, him in the target chair. I'm not worried about Pitts. His target chair was still high enough. Atlanta, man. Atlanta's okay. They'll blow mm, it, Atlanta. but they're not horrible. I, I tweeted for you for that one. They almost pulled the upset. You were calling that upset, and they at least kept it close. You said it was guaranteed they were going to keep it close and almost pulled off the upset. Yeah, the five and a half was the play there. So Drake London, Jacoby Myers at 36, Elijah Moore, Juju, Isaiah McKenzie, Julio, uh, Godwin's going to be out. So Julio looks like a pretty good play. He didn't get a ton of run, but the run that he got was very effective. They were using him down. He looked like old Julio Jones all of a sudden. Not the shell of whatever the hell he was in Tennessee. Uh, Dotson, did you, Robin- did you not? Well, hold on. Did you not like clench every time he dove for a pass, though? Like, I legitimately was like, every single time it happened. Hey, listen, he's just going to go full speed until his hamstrings both just pop out of his legs. And that's going to be the end of Julio <laughs> Jones. That's how this ends. It's the only way. It can end. <laughs> don't say that because now that's going to feel terrible. I don't want it, it to happen. happen. I love Julio Jones. But like for a guy with hamstring injuries every single year. Yeah, it is somewhat frightening to see him just going balls to the wall. Maybe that's why they're playing him <laughs> like 50 percent of the snaps. Uh, that could be why. Uh, let's go back here. If Tyler Boyd, let's say T Higgins is out. I have Tyler Boyd at 44 with Higgins in. How far do you think you would move him up? Tyler Boyd would probably, who I'd put him over Adam Thielen for, I'd play him over Amari Cooper. I'd probably right there, right by Marquise Brown, because yes, he's not going to move from the slot. Mike Thomas played outside as soon as T Higgins left, but Tyler Boyd's world's better than Mike Thomas. So Uh, I think you could even make a case for Tyler Boyd to creep up on the other, the real Michael Thomas. Yeah, I have real Michael Thomas at number 22. I was starting to get worried about old Michael Thomas on Sunday until he got two touchdowns and all was good in the world. But it did seem like there was the report that came out right before the game that they'd be easing him back in. And that did seem to be the case. And then the second half, they were just like, "Eh, throw it to Michael Thomas. (laughs) <laughs> Which was nice. Yeah. And Michael Thomas scored twice. He's definitively back and feeling really good as a play. I, I worry about him if the touchdowns aren't there, though. Like, what does he actually give your team? Is it like five for 50 or is it like nine well, for 90 like we used to get? Well, so I think that's why you have him a fair spot. I mean, honestly, he kind of feels like Gabe Davis right now. Is like, what if it's not the touchdown, but at least he's probably a good bet to score one. All right, so continuing to go down, like Devontae Smith, I have him at 43 after the zero burger. Donovan Peoples-Jones, he of the short route or super long route. Those are his only two routes. I have him at number 45, but they should be able to beat up on the Jets a little bit. Do you worry about Sauce Gardner on Amari Cooper? Or was that just 
Lamar Jackson being like, hey, Devin Duvernay is wide open. I'll just throw it to him. Oh, you mean Rashad Bateman? Yeah. Oh, the, Cooper, did, like... did Bateman? I mean, I know Bateman caught the touchdown, but yeah. primarily in that game, Sauce was Duver- on Rashad Duvernay. Bateman. Did yeah. a good job with him until Bateman got off. All of a sudden, okay. he's catching touchdowns. Do you think that Amari yeah. Cooper against Sauce Gardner mm-hmm. might be an issue and Donovan Peoples Jones could break up? Like, should I have those two be a play and closer again. together? Uh, the, yeah, so I see where you're going with that. Yeah, I, I think that because of what I said before, too, is that Amari Cooper didn't get peppered by Brissett, which was my whole argument for Cooper as a wide receiver three this year. And I have him way too many teams if this is going to go sideways. But I, I think that if it kind of goes to the conversation when I'm talking about Robert Woods, is that if he's going to be treated like the number one still and they'll just say, all right, fine, we'll let Donovan Peoples-Jones you know, just do whatever, because what was those 11 targets didn't even turn into that much in the first week? Yes, then it's another concern. So Amari Cooper, I was looking behind the names already, even before we had this conversation. I feel like Amari Cooper is kind of in that Allen Robinson, Tyler Lockett conversation now. All right, so move Cooper from 26 to like, let's say, I'd still play him over Allen Robinson, so like to 32? 32. If I if Kittle's back, I'd move him up one more in front of Ayuk. I, I, I'm going to put him behind Ayuk anyway. I'll put him b- between okay. Ayuk and Allen Robinson. Okay. Yeah. That'll be the spot for him uh, to talk about Robert Woods. Number 60. Do you want to start that guy I had never heard of who led Tennessee in receiving? Kyle Phillips? That guy, yeah. No, because his snap shower, snap share, shower, I know. snap share, <laughs> snap share was still super low. Uh, I mean, although it was, uh, I mean, Westbrook Aquino was in front of him. Traylon Burks was way, way, way down. I think Burks is going to continue to creep his way up, but. Is that Buffalo, dude? No. <laughs> it's like Derrick Henry and hope this works out. And that's about it, which also, by the way, I know we know we're talking di- tight ends, but Austin Hooper was a one week. That might be interesting and forget that for the rest of the year. If you're going to keep blocking and losing snaps to Jeff Swaim in the passing game. Yeah, it was not a great scene for Hoop Hooperton. So he's going to go away. There's a bunch of tight ends that we thought might be all right that. I mean, at least I didn't have any in Joku. That was nice. No, but I mean, he was out there a ton. But yeah, blocking. Just, they, you, they, they paid him to block. No, he, no, no, no. He ran routes too. It's just that Jacoby Brissett had eyes for people's Jones and that was it. I mean, Cooper had what? Seven, eight targets? None of them landed anywhere close. Except I mean, for one, like one, one three of them. them. Did, one, one of them did land close. He just got pass interfered with in the end zone. That would have been a touchdown. So. Okay. You know, he that's catches true, that, that all that, of a sudden. That, no one's like panicked about Amari but, Cooper. Yeah, but that is so. I mean, that doesn't even technically count in the scheme of things. No, it doesn't. No, I agree with you on that front. So, let's see here, Josh Palmer, forty-six. I mean, he didn't really do anything as soon as when Keenan Allen left the game. Not they were throwing a ton like they were earlier. Has Chase Claypool just taken the old juju role in Pittsburgh? He's his a dots like six at, at that, and he's also getting rushing opportunities. So that, that's the interesting. By the way, I was going to mention Juju Smith-Schuster was way too low. No, he's terrible. Don't play him. No, he's not. Get Look at what he did in week one. He's the number one. Way too low. No, he's actually the number two because Travis Kelsey is the guy. That, he's the only guy you can trust on Kansas City week to week. No, you can trust Juju too. I'm telling you. you can trust get Juju you to come around on Juju. Juju. I mean, this f- from I, I guess I have no credibility left after draft cam acres, draft CD Lamb, but like, no, thank you. No, thank you. I mean, I, I said Ass. draft cam acres and draft Amari Cooper. So, I mean, no, there they, we go. Yeah, see, we're bringing up. We all focus our... on the 80%, not the 20%. No, no. People want to hear the bad picks. That's what they need. That's what they come here for. <laughs> they relish in it, Jake. <laughs> they, they swim in it. That's just what they do. Let's go to quarterbacks. Josh Allen is number one. No real surprise. Or at least it shouldn't be a surprise to people. Maybe it is. Patrick Mahomes at number two Thursday night, along with his counterpart, Justin Herbert. Lamar Jackson, Jalen, you hurts. Joe Burrow, mm-hmm. Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, Tom Brady, Trey Lance. Going back to the Trey Lance well. One more time here. Hopefully the better conditions in San Francisco will alleviate some of the problems that he had. I have Derek Carr at number 11. Carson Wentz, Matt Stafford, Kirk Cousins, Mariota, Daniel Jones, Trevi Lawrence, Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers, and Justin Fields, who are, again, playing each other. I think if you're looking for the streamers this week, it's Carr and Wentz. And I don't think that Wentz is going to throw four touchdowns every game, but he's sneaky old school Jameis where he's going to make such terrible decisions and throw the other team free points. That's going to keep him throwing the entire time. That's great for fantasy. (laughs) I mean, it really is. And he was doing that. Like, actually, the, the first half of the last week, if you remember, Carson Wentz was outperforming Matt Ryan. <laughs> and then, Matt Ryan was uh, terrible. In the, it looked it, like Carson Wentz shang-sunged his body. Like, all of a sudden, he's just Carson Wentz. 
<laughs> That's a great callback. By the he way. even tried <laughs> to like, it almost looked like he tried to throw the ball left-handed at one point. I was like, that's what Carson Wentz does. <laughs> and Carson Wentz made some terrible throws too. And some terrible interceptions. And so, yeah, yeah but the, the, you know what though, the difference is the difference is what? Matt Ryan Not is quote good. unquote better than Carson Wentz, but Carson Wentz is just like YOLO. I'm chucking it up. Which is so funny that his interceptions were so low last year. It's kind of he's like smart YOLO. Is that a thing? He's not. He just got incredibly lucky with dropped Yolo? interceptions last year. <laughs> well, that uh, that is true. The one like to nitpick with your ranks, and I'm Team Lamar Jackson. I had him top three this year. How but... dare you? You're not what you're benching Lamar Jackson because it's my no, no, I have Jalen Hurts over Lamar Jackson. Jalen Hurts is, we said that the, if anybody could unseat the number one this year, which isn't going to happen, it doesn't look like, but it's Jalen Hurts. And I don't know what we need to see from that offense a week one, not to be like Jalen Hurts is top three or four every damn week, let alone in a game if we're going to play what we do play and try to project. Minnesota versus Philadelphia on paper should be like 30 something to 30 something on paper. Uh, you would think so, but I was actually quite impressed with, and maybe it was just the lack of availability of good players on the Packers offensive line. That the I Vikings think that's what it was. Backfield. <laughs> I, I just think that's going to be a bit of a tighter game, a bit of a more back and forth. And Lamar okay. did nothing and scored like 25 points. Mm, sure. But, but he didn't have to do any, he didn't, to... he didn't even run in that game and he was still amazing. Yeah. That's because Lamar Jackson's amazing, yeah. but uh, who else? What do you got here that I can else look at potentially? I mean, I don't really have much else to argue with. with is the, Stafford the, at 13? Is, like, should I have Stafford lower or is this like a bounce back spot for him? It comes down to what I was talking about with the offensive line. Now, hopefully, it's crazy to say note boom is back, but it's just that's how bad the offensive line is. It's at home and they're getting a 10 days rest at basically nobody played on this team in the preseason essentially for you know argument's sake you're gonna be like well this guy did essentially nobody played on this team in the preseason which by the way which we continue to see for the past three years some of these teams maybe at least get some reps in the preseason and not like every time i know every time you step on the field more likely to get hurt but how about how ugly week one has been for the past couple seasons for half the league so Maybe it's a get right, and it's a get right against Atlanta at home. So where you have him, I'm not going to argue against it. Uh, if you want to play Cousins over him, I have no problem with that. But there's no way on earth I'm playing Mariota. You know I'm not playing Daniel Jones. Trevor Lawrence, you know I love some Trevor Lawrence, but Indianapolis, even though it's at home, and then it kind of just gets dicey from there. So I don't think you can push him that much lower, even if you tried. Yeah, it's a tough scene. Tough scene out there. It is. It is. the gang. Uh, Matt, and Ryan then for, Matt Ryan, really interesting suck. thing. Matt Ryan, oh, I, that, no, there's no question about it. The interesting thing about Tua is that Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle both had really nice games, and he was still what, like QB 18 for the week. <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny. I I actually played a same game parlay right before the game. My friend and I were sitting next to each other, and he's a Dolphins fan. I was like, if they don't throw to Hill or Waddle, who are they throwing to? He's like, I don't know, Edmonds or Cedric Wilson. I was like, why don't we just go Tua over? Hill over, Waddle over, and it cashed by like the midway through the second. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, it's not even Cedric Wilson because all reports had as soon as the season was started that he got passed by Trent Sherfield. I forgot about Trent Sherfield. Forgot he was a real guy. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I didn't even look at that here. I'm going to pull them up real quick. Let's pull up the Dolphins and see what the, uh, the snaps for the routes run on this team were. So route percentage was Hill 86, Waddle 78, Edmonds 58. Oh, there you go. Cedric Wilson was the third. 47. Sherfield was 28. But still, 47? That's the same. That's barely more than Gesicki ran. 44% of the routes. Gesicki's so bad. Uh, pff, we, we told everybody that it was going to be I bad. know, but listen, they took our <laughs> other advice and it was terrible. Maybe they didn't listen to us on that one. That's, that's possible. <laughs> Speaking of Gesicki, let's talk tight ends. Kelsey, no surprise Worst place. there. Number one at tight end. Andrews, Pitts, Waller, Schultz. Top five, Hawkinson, Higby, Eleanor, Higby, Dallas Goddard, Pat Fryermuth, Zach Ertz. I was trying to figure out uh, how like the rest of the tight end shakeout, like those seem to be the 10 safe tight ends to me. I mean, quote unquote safe, but in terms of volume, the right kind of safe that I'm looking for. Um, did I put Kittle in here? Maybe I added Kittle after the fact. I did. You did. Uh, if, if you Kittle go to five. the uh, if you go to the updated rankings right now on the site, you'll see that George Kittle's number five. So you have the top eleven. Listen, if Kittle's playing, you're playing Kittle. 
That's just what it boils down to. If he's not playing, find someone else. That easy. But it could be Hayden Hurst, who I have at number 12. Juwan Johnson, who I have at number 13. Dawson Knox. Gerald Everett. I mean, if Parham Gerald comes Everett's back. Intriguing. What's that? I said Ger- Gerald Everett is definitely intriguing. If no Keenan Allen in a short week and if Parham's not out there, uh, I love some Joshua Palmer, but or Josh Palmer, as you call him, because you guys are friends. Yeah, we're uh, both Canadian. But... That, that's why we can Don't go forget, there. it's Amazon Prime video for Thursday Night Football this year. <laughs> Yeah, she had, shout out to our girl Kay Adams working that one. Oh, yeah, that that threw me for I forgot that was a thing this year to go there for to watch the game. So yeah, Knox, Everett, Tunyon, Logan Thomas, who worked his way back into the mix a little bit, then like the yeah. unholy trio of everyone's favorite preseason sleepers, Komet, Irv Smith, and Big Albert O. Albert O looked like he's the best of them all, but then ha- people were having like a mini meltdown on Twitter when it wasn't him catching the ball. It was that other guy. What's his name? Uh, it wasn't even um, it wasn't the, it was the rookie. It was the other guy. Was, um, oh God! I can look at his stupid hair and face because he's actually got some pretty nice hair. I'm trying. I'm gonna just pull it up because I I'm having a brain fart. Uh, not Andrew Beck. Was it Andrew Beck or was it? Yeah, no, it was. Thomas yeah, where, no, yeah. Everyone was making, every, no, it was Beck. It was Andrew like, Beck. Everyone Beck's was making the their two turntables and a microphone. Their Odele jokes. They they had to get all of their everything from the Beckionary out of their system and they were good to go. and, and then <laughs> the were... best thing Beck ever did was the episode Fut- of Futurama Futurama I agree that's the best thing they ever did so sleeper tight nice ends do you, do you think I have the two proper ones here be it Hurst Juwan Johnson I think those are the two streamers you can go pick up and play yeah, I, I think that's pretty much where you have to go for this I, I was looking at their routes run for tight ends too and I tweeted that out earlier in the week and there was some ugly ugly situations including like Irv Smith Johnny Munt ran more than he did so no, Nelson Munts <laughs> yeah Nelson Munts uh I'm trying to I'll give you the, the quick look right here uh, let's see Hunter do you have Hunter Henry because Hunter Henry actually ran the fourth most route percentage of all tight ends last week yeah here's the thing I have Hunter Henry at number 22 because the thing is the offense is not any good it sucks <laughs> it's horrid Mac Jones is hurt <laughs> what? What a surprise asking three different people to try and run an offense is not working. What a shock. Hayden Hurst, by the way, for your point of having them there, ninth most, the highest ninth uh, in front of Travis Kelsey. Ran, ran a higher route percentage than Travis Kelsey ran. That's really interesting. I guess you just don't need him to block whatsoever. But, I mean, I don't know what they were doing. Like, the entire Chiefs offense, like, their stats are all out of whack in terms of routes run and snap percentages because hey. they just, like, benched everyone in the third quarter. I, I want to bring him up just because I want you to yell at me about him. Who? Evan Ingram did catch 100% of his targets. That's great. He had the best game of his career, three for 30 or something. <laughs> it was four for 20, four for four for 20. Good for him. Yeah. Legendary <laughs> performance from Evan Ingram. <laughs> I mean, he, he ran more routes than Hawkinson did, so. I'd rather have Hawkinson. How about you? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. That's, there's, I've seen, th- this is how crazy it is. If for everybody out there, and like we sit here and talk about some, and you know how it is, Pat, not in my league. I mean, there's already people out there to be like, what do I, should I pick up Hawkinson or do I pick up Jalen Warren? Because somebody dropped Hawkinson, but I have Darren Waller. And it's like, you know, that that's this is the league some people play in. Yeah, you don't, though. I mean, in that specific situation, if you have one, like, don't carry two tight ends. Like, that's ridiculous. No, because nobody trades for them either. Unless you have two bad tight ends, then you can kind of mix and match if you have, like, Hayden Hurst and Pat Fryermuth or something like that. Like, lower lower and non-elite tight ends. Then you can be a situation like, oh, I like this matchup. I'll play that guy. And even then, it probably just leads to bench mistakes anyway. But if you have a good tight end, you know who to play every week. It it takes part of the process of fantasy football is simply just... Let me put myself into a position where I'm not going to make a mistake. Mm, exactly. By the way, do you know who had the second highest yards per route run for tight ends in week one? Don't know. Ian Thomas. Good for him. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he had that one huge catch. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly why. Uh, defenses <laughs> to close this out. Once again, all the hot links down in the description. I got the Browns, the Rams, Denver, San Francisco, Indy, Cincy, Tampa, Green Bay, Giants, Buffalo mm. as the top 10. Then Vegas, because Arizona did not look good. New England, Washington, Carolina, KC, and then the Chargers. I, did, I mean, listen, I'm not I'm not looking for KC or the Chargers to pitch a shutout on Thursday night, but short week no. tends to lead to wonkier situations. And when you have two teams that are, combined, are going to combine the pass the ball like 90 times, there's a lot of opportunities for you know, picks, pick sixes, whatever it might be. 
Yeah, so the only one that I had is kind of – I'm with you. I actually had Vegas as one of my streaming. Like, I don't want to, but I had them as interesting. I even had the Jets as, like, again, if you're really scratching Jeez. for – yeah, I know, but if you're really scratching, but the one I would go high, you have them higher, but you still have them at 20 is the Steelers, only because of who they're facing. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I just think it's going to be a very slow-paced game, and the reason that I don't like the Jets, because I did give the, the Jets a look, is from what I saw out of the Browns last week, they actually scored more points than I thought they would, but they just want to run the ball, and there's no fantasy yeah, points to be do. scored when the other yeah. team is running the ball on you. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's basically the Pittsburgh and the Jets are in the same scenario there. Yeah, man, that's I mean, I still think that even without Watt, the Pittsburgh has at least the more opportunistic defense. They did have five turnovers. Left. Their offense is so bad, by the way. Like, it's, it's horrendous. <laughs> watch them pull. Watch them like win like 30 to 10 this week now. <laughs> I mean, they might against. Uh, I, I just. I, I can't figure that team out. Like they should have won by 4000 points against Cincinnati and <laughs> actually should have lost. <laughs> and yeah, they should. Uh, Cincinnati not winning that game was to. Hmm. I don't want to talk about it. All right. Well, what do you got going on this week? Oh, yeah. You know, the waiver's already out last midnight, or depending on when you're watching, and Monday, Tuesday, midnight, and then ranks out Tuesday, Wednesday, midnight, and then the matchup column Wednesday, Thursday, midnight, or whatever. Those dates come on. All of football. That's more important. I'm doing a giveaway like you are, Pat. Not as quite as good as yours, but I'm giving an Xbox Series X away. All right. So uh, that is up on FTN's YouTube page? Yes. Yes, it is. Go over there, sub to that, all in football. And again, if you want to get in the giveaway for the $1,000, this is the last day to do so. Sub to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast, Apple or Spotify. Turn on auto downloads. Need them downloads. Don't need those listens. Need those downloads. And you can do it on both sites if you want to for double the chance of winning, I mean, the $500 top prize. It'll be announced on Wednesday's show, playing the Listener's League. Use the link, sub to the newsletter, all that fun stuff. Smash the like and sub to the channel on the way out too. I'm Pat Mayo. Thank you all for watching. Watching. I'll see you next time. Experience. Experience.